much. Sorry. I'm gonna chase my chair. There we go. Hi. Alan here. And uh, um, sorry, I'm kind of late on this, but I've been busy this week. Um, this is the uh, the what's in the box video for the um, new Hobby King 700 um, um, assault and battery um, helicopter. So um, uh, this is all I've done so far is I've cut the tape open. Um, so it's just going to be a little easier to to get into the things, but I haven't actually haven't actually fingered through the boxes yet. So this is going to be as much a surprise to you as it is to me. So what we have here is we have a standard line style pack of three inner boxes. And what we're going to do is we're just going to we're going to close this bigger outer box and we're just going to pitch it out into the hall. That was fun. All right, and well, let's take a look at the long box first. I think this is going to be pretty simple since there's really no... Okay, that one's empty. Um, since there's no blades in this kit, um, I did buy um, separate blades. We've got some nice uh, um, RGX carbon fiber um, fly barless blades. I'm just going to pull that out of there. We'll leave that out. Play with that later. Um, the other things I've purchased for the helicopter is I have a uh, 120 volt high, uh, 120, 120 amp, I'm sorry, high voltage ESC. All right, uh, from Hobby King. Um, we have the Turnigy SK3 heli drive motor. All right, um, bought a whole bunch of these little blue. Um, beauty, beauty rings, beauty washers. Oops, lost one. Sorry. Hopefully, I don't fall off the chair. It likes to slide out from under me when I do stuff like that. There we go. Let's put that back. Come on. Uh, there you go. And since we have fly barless, we're going to be putting in the uh, Hobby King 3DH. Um, uh, Flybar system controller, and for the main three servos, we're going to be using the Turnigy Power Systems. Uh, what is it? It's the 1258 um, uh, titanium gear servos. So, and I got a tail servo around here somewhere. I'm not sure where it is. Okay, so back to the uh, what's in the box video. All right, so what we have here is we have a uh, looks like we have the all the long stock. That means the tail boom and uh, any push rods um, that may be in the thing and it's all nicely wrapped in bubble wrap um, maybe a little too well because it's taking me a while to get into it it's bubble wrapped on the outside and then poly bagged on the inside all right we successfully have the bubble wrap off now we just have the poly bag to contend with oh yes we also have the landing gear so let's just take a pair of scissors real quick and zip open the end of this poly bag and so here we have the landing gear tubes um, this is a uh, uh, this is not a belt drive tail but a, a, a shaft driven tail not my favorite way to go but Oops, looks like that came out from its bearing. So there's the shaft. Oh, that'll be an exciting shot. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Look at that shaft. All right. So we have the tail drive shaft. We have some very nice, um, very nice uh, boom supports. Uh, but uh, whatever adhesive they used, um, whatever they adhesive they used to try to attach the aluminum to the, 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 the carbon fiber rods, um, uh, better luck next time because it's just snapping right in my fingers so what we'll do is we'll uh, we'll go ahead and sand that rod down and give it a good um, rough surface on the inside uh, as well as the inside of the aluminum tube and uh, when, once you do that and you use a good nice uh, like a 30 minute epoxy or something like that they are on forever so there's that and then we have the tail push rod let's see if that suffers the same problem nope 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 that's a really nice that's a nice piece of kit that's a nice 
nice tail push rod. And here's the tail boom and there is a bearing down the center to support it. And then we have the boom support guides, which uh, I may or may not use um, because uh, I have a, a, another way I like to do that. All right, the next thing we're going to look at here is the big box. All right, so we have some have some airbags. I hate these things, but at least they uh, once you pop them. So this is like it's like Hobby King owes me about. owes me at least four hours worth of wages so far just popping the air out of these things. Now let's bring the trash a little closer here so I can get stuff thrown away right away so the hobby lab doesn't become the crap Ola lab like it frequently does. All right so here's the I'm gonna get rid of this box. Out it goes and so what we have here is this looks like the the canopy and we're just going to use a pair of scissors to gently cut around the tape. Around It's very well packed, nice foam protection. Um, initial glance at the canopy says that it's in moderately good shape. There's a pressure crack here, pressure crack there. But I don't really care about canopies because uh, usually I replace them with something else. Well, this is fairly nice for what it is. All right, so let's check the other side. We have a bit of a, a paint dribble there, another pressure crack. Uh, you know, the pressure cracks probably happen during shipping. Um, doesn't surprise me at all because they don't allow these things to cure all, as long as as long as they should. So you can see it's got some, and it's got some nice, uh, highly reflective chrome graphics in there. It's fairly lightweight. It's already got the grommets put in, which is a nice touch. So, all in all, not bad. All right. So, on to the um, the body. We'll see how pre-assembled it is. That's one of the things that I'm not crazy about. Um, Hobby King ki um, uh, uh, helicopters, um, especially the the higher end ones, is that. They, they do a great deal of pre-assembly, which unfortunately um, means that you end up wasting time taking things apart to make sure they were put back together. They were put together properly in the first place. So, all right, we're getting this out. Oh, dear, oh dear, oh dear. That's taking a little more time than I thought. There we go. All right. And so we have the main body here. Let's quite large actually. Nice big body. The main frame of the helicopter and out it comes and only one, two screws fall out of the bag. And I have no idea what they went to. Um, let's see, let's see if we can figure out where they went. Don't know where they went. They may be the motor, I uh, can't be the motor screws, they're far too small. So anyway we have, um, let's take a look at this. We have uh, we have three main bearings, and bearings are smooth, no notchiness in them, so they weren't damaged on the uh, on the insertion. Very nicely done. Um, let's try to pop them out easily. Nope, they don't pop out easily at all. So um, nice tight fit on the machining without damaging the bearing. We have the tail drive gear we actually have a pin through the shaft um, on the on the upper bevel gear here you can see this upper bevel gear there's actually a you can see a pin there right there so that's nice um, got a, a nice aluminum aluminum everywhere aluminum there's no plastic um, interconnects here at all so that's very nice let's move on so that's not that's not too bad. Nothing terribly disappointing there. Now this, our two little uh, wayward screws. Um, what we're going to do here is we're going to we're going to grab a, a plastic bag out of the um, massive hobby lab inventory. Um, today I just got in uh, uh, several hundred T pins for. Uh, for building uh, balsa wood models, so 
so the, uh, the, the inventory keeps growing. All right, on to our last box, our final box, that has most of the other hardware in it. Okay, we have bubble wrap, we have yet more of those plastic bags, we have this big, looks like a diaper, this looks like some kind of a diaper, um, this looks like uh, somebody's sandwich for lunch. Okay, here we go, so we have uh, a bag of um, uh, the tail hardware, and there's a boom clamp in there, nice sturdy Align style low boy landing gear. I, I prefer it taller, I might replace that. Here's a bag of Velcro straps and the blade holder and lots and lots of Velcro um, adhesives and there appears to be some extra hardware in there for uh, some final assembly. All right, here's the main gear. This is, um, this is something that I want to take a good close look at because one of the things I want to do with this helicopter is I want to um, put an encoder on the um, on the uh, main gear. I want to put some kind of an encoder on there so I can send the um, send the head speed back to the Tyrannus and have the the sexy female um, voice in the Tyrannus tell me what the head speed is when I flick a switch on um, the transmitter. So I will have a built-in um, uh, head speed feedback. Uh, on this helicopter. Um, nice bearings. Um, there's no way of telling right out off the bat without getting out some some really nice um, in dial indicator hardware, but just spinning it around in my fingers, I'm not seeing any wobble run out, any kind of wobbling run out. The, it seems to be fairly well molded. I would have preferred obviously a helical gear, but hey, it's a Hobby King helicopter, what do you expect? Alright, so here's the um, um, the anti-rotation bracket for the uh, fly, uh, for the swash plate, and here's some nice aluminum um, servo arms, alright? So we'll pass that on. Here's the uh, there's a, oh, okay, here's the, the pinion, here's the pinion gear for the motor. In this little bag here, so set that aside, and that bubble wrap goes out, and that box goes out, and this is the battery tray, sliding battery tray. This is the aluminum uh, 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 tray that goes into the bottom of the. This basically goes right up into here, and you can see it's got a, a, a carbon tray here that um, allows you to put straps and velcro there and you can basically buy extra ones of these extra extra of these carbon trays and you can have multiple battery packs already um, already velcroed down and charged up and so when you want to do your next flight you just basically um, uh, release a little uh, clip and slide the the the, the tray out and uh, you uh, slide a, a new uh, charged one in. And let's find out what's in this uh, somebody's sandwich. I think this might be somebody's sandwich from the factory. I, I think somebody went home hungry once uh, one day because they couldn't. They, their sand, their sandwich got got left in the bag or got left in my kit here. So let's. I hope it's ham because I'm really kind of in the mood for some ham. Um, uh, I'm getting a little dis disappointed here be already because this looks like if there's a sandwich in here, it's a damn small one. All right. But, um, I have no idea what's in here, so this will be a surprise. Oh, okay, this is the tail block. And this is actually worthy of uh, zipping out of here real fast because this is a, a very important part of every helicopter and the quality is critical. And um, nice, even, no wobble, perceptible wobble on those gears that I can see as I go around. Um, nice smooth motion on the tail pitch. You have a double, a double-sided um, tail pitch slider. It's the the full U-shaped arm for this, which is really nice. Um, very smooth. Nice piece of kit, nice bearings in it, uh, uh, moves smoothly. Um, centered bronze, uh, standard centered bronze um, slider 
on the uh, tail shaft. So very, very nice piece of kit. Comes with uh, deluxe plastic tail blades. So um, those will probably go in the bin. Those will probably get replaced with carbon pretty quick. Um, although, you know, plastic's not bad. It, it does its job. All right, uh, somebody tells me um, this is not a diaper. This is not one of the factory workers' uh, way of getting rid of uh, one of the diapers from their, from their children. Just, for one, I don't smell anything that smells like um, uh, baby. So, um, so I, I'm thinking this might be the head in here. So, boy, did they pack this well. My goodness. There's, there's so much protective foam around this. They did a good job of making sure this didn't damage anything else by putting so much foam in it. Foam around it. Let's get rid of all this. Uh, Got to be careful not to throw any good things out. All right, so that's gone. Let's get this this final this final what's in the what's in the box part out of its bag, and let's release this this wild nasty um, snarling beast into the world. Oh my god, it is a very nice head. Now one of the problems with the last big hel um, helicopter from um, from Hobby King was um, the swash plate was absolute crap. Um, the HK600 uh, um, GT has um, absolute um, duty for a swash plate. This, I am glad to say, is a nice, nice ball, ball ring, um, ball centered a nylon captured steel ball in the center swash plate and um, nice DFC design um, and, and <laughs> I love this this is a 700 size helicopter and yet it's got um, you know a palm stop uh, you know uh, head button on it and I'm just wondering uh, you know apart from guys like uh, uh, you know, professional basketball players, who the hell has arms long enough to reach in and put your palm on here with 700 size blades? I, I, you know, I don't know who is it, but it's nice big, uh, I think that's a 10 centimeter, uh, I'm sorry, 10 millimeter shaft. I don't know, I'd ha it might be 12. I'd have to kind of get a tool out to test it. But very nice head. All right, so that's um, that's pretty much everything. That's the what's in the box video. Thanks for watching, and um, have a good day, and we'll see you and talk to you again soon. Bye-bye. The sun comes up and the sun goes down. Hands on the clock keep going around. I just get up and it's time to lay down. Life gets tedious, don't it?